In September of 2019, Maine became the ninth state to enact a death with dignity law. There are now 11 and similar laws are being debated in several other states, including New York and Massachusetts. Last year, because of this law, 30 terminally ill people in Maine chose to end their lives before their disease could. Eric Carlson was one of them. We brought you his story a year ago as the date he had set drew near and as his inoperable brain cancer chipped away at his ability to function. Tonight, we revisit his family who supported his decision to die on his own terms to talk about how they feel about this law now, a year after Eric chose to use it. I don't want just days. I, I want to be me and do the things I want to do. That was Eric Carlson eight days before he died. It, it was so clear, like, this is it. His thoughts were clear, his choice unwavering. He would complete all of the required steps to use Maine's death with dignity law. There's a peacefulness to it. That there's just an absolute peacefulness to it. He got us together and he said, this is what I want to do. And we all agreed that in his case, absolutely the best end to a horrible situation. Eric had glioblastoma, an invasive brain cancer with an awful end. He fought hard for a year and a half. After his second brain surgery, his doctors leveled with him. And told him he would probably have about six more months to live, that he would end up in a wheelchair, incontinent, us feeding him. He said, no, thank you. It's not for me. The trauma of like watching him deteriorate um, any further would have been um, devastating. Eric's partner, Stephanie, mom, Ruth, sister, Lindsay, and daughters, Amelia and Isabel, were among Eric's inner circle, the people with whom he chose to spend his last day. The lifelong forester went out to his beloved woods for one last ride. That night we had a nice fire. Everybody he wanted here was here. We had music playing. We had a great big fire going. Um, we were all here with him. And it was just this beautiful kind of like timeless moment. Like the lessons that he gave me like during those last hours and like just the, the words of wisdom and the hopes and dreams that he had for the, each of us. And I'm just very thankful that we had that like sense of closure. Eric said goodbye to each of them and went to his room to take a legally prescribed medication that would stop his heart. He's the bravest man I've ever known. He walked up these stairs and that was it. That was on his 50th birthday, a date he set so what was it like for his loved ones when the clock was ticking down? Eric said we were just going with the flow and and we were trying to live a normal life, but knowing that his death was coming, it was just very strange. Every second lost like broke my heart a little bit. And I think that was that was like the hardest part. It just gives you a heightened sense of uh appreciating the moments that you have. They all agree that last week, the second in the mandated two week waiting period was difficult for Eric. He was so frustrated and just seeing him in that state of frustration where like the week before there had been such peace. It was probably the most miserable week of his life only because he had made up his mind. We were all here to support him. And it's like, well, what are we waiting for? The family would like to see the waiting period in Maine shortened, like California has done for patients in hospice. And because by the end of the waiting period, his bodily functions were rapidly deteriorating, Eric had difficulty swallowing. He did not get down the full dose of medication. He was unconscious, but it took him longer than the typical four hours to pass away. And it was all overnight and we were all emotionally drained. Adding to the emotion, the stigma that comes with making this choice, one his daughters are determined to erase. He was so worried that we were going to be disappointed or, or that we felt like he was abandoning us. And that was, it was like, no, 
you're an adult, you, you're you, like, no one should have to live like this. I had a few people who I was close with ask like, well, why would he do that to you? And it's like, well, it's not about me. Like my dad's in serious pain and is termin terminally ill. Like he can make this decision for himself. It's not about me or my sister or my family. It's about him. Eric did not want a funeral, but rather a celebration of life. This summer, family and friends gathered to celebrate his zest, humor, and Nordic heritage. His daughters told funny stories because, well, they have so many. We would much rather talk about, you know, the ridiculous things that he said or all, you know, funny stories, um, you know, than dwell on how, how, dwell on his absence. It was joyful and I felt like he would have loved it. And now a full year later, they all, to a person, say they are grateful that Eric had a choice. I think that that was such an honor to be able to be here with him and to walk this journey with him. Eric asked his family to advocate for death with dignity, and clearly they have. Ruth, his mother, lives in Massachusetts, and she says she's doing everything she can to get a similar bill, now before the legislature, passed in that state.